Hey guys, welcome back, Ricky here. Okay, so I got a message from a subscriber and here is the message. It's uh, by MA Exit or Ma Exit. Hopefully I pronounced it right. Write me if I pronounced it wrong. Um, but found your channel, instant sub, smiley face, super sympathetic and well produced. I'm a bloody beginner. I would love a video about the burr and how you feel for it. And what is important and if there is a trick to make it more visible or so smiley face okay this is a tutorial for so for those who don't like long videos skip forward or just hit the close button because this is gonna be a longer video than you guys may want and again this is only my opinion I'm not going to defend or attack anyone else's position this is strictly based on what I know and experience in my own sharpening you know life so the first thing is what is a burr well essentially uh, without me showing any fancy graphs a burr is imagine this is the tip of your knife the edge of your knife a burr is essentially a strip of steel or strip of metal material that is either standing on one side or the other or standing straight it's essentially the cutting the very tip of the cutting edge of your knife and when people are sharpening and they're asking you or they're saying look for the burr you're basically trying to figure out is if you have polished or sharpened the one side of the knife enough you should feel a lip of material on the other side. So this is the first thing that we'll do. And the easiest way to really understand what a burr is, is to just produce one, feel for it, and then we'll talk about how to get rid of it, how to um, lessen it, and why it's important that you have a burr or did not develop a burr. And so the first thing is take your knife. This here is my Dowel Strong uh, Phantom Series Chef Knife. I just got this and I will be doing a whole lot of sharpening videos and tutorials on this knife soon. So the first thing is, let's just get the burr here and then we can talk about it. So this knife here, I'm gonna just, let's just do the tip, take the tip of your knife and let's just sharpen the knife. Okay, and this knife is out of the box, fairly sharp. Okay, so now this is what you'll do. I want you to take your hand or your finger and you run it along the side of the knife, okay? Not against it, just along the side from your spine to the cutting edge. And when you get to where we just sharpened, you should feel a difference in texture or a difference in height or elevation of the cutting edge. That is a burr, okay? That's the easiest way I can tell you how to, how to feel for it and how to understand what a burr is. Okay, another way you can see or another way that you can tell your burr is either not standing straight or to the side is by doing a really quick cut test. So this is a piece of paper. It's a little wet and damp. All you need to do is cut the paper from edge to edge of your knife. Now notice there, when I got to the last inch of the knife, the paper got really kind of jagged and that tells me that the burr on the cutting edge is straight all the way until the last inch of the knife. Let's do it one more time. Yeah, you hear that? Okay, so visually, that is how you can tell you have a burr that is not straight. All right, so here is why a burr is important. When you're sharpening your knife, and again, this is just a under a microscope, for example, if you have a thousand grit, let's just say you have a 400 stone or 500 grit stone, your burr, okay, is gonna look a lot more like this. It's either gonna stand to one side or the other, right? And on a 1000 grit stone, that burr may be a little bit shorter, but there still is gonna be a burr. Again, if you straighten your burr out, it's gonna look like that. And on a 6000 grit stone, you may think you, there is no burr on either side, but there is a burr, okay? You can never fully get rid of a burr under an electron microscope, you will see, even on the finest polishing stones, there is a burr, uh, or a kind of a, it looks like a, it's a hacksaw. Just imagine teeth on a hacksaw. You really can never get rid of that burr. But the trick is, whether you have the burr or not, either on a 500 grit stone or 1000 grit stone or a 6000 grit stone, your, your goal is to make that burr stand straight on its end. So whether it's a really coarse burr that is standing on its end, or a very fine burr that is standing on its end, you want that burr on the end of the cutting edge. Because if you guys have watched some of my videos, if you guys wanna go to my, I'll post some 
descriptions in the in the link below, or I'll post some links in the description below of my coarse sharpening sessions where I sharpen my knives on a 120 Diamond Stone, on a 120 Shapton Pro, on a 320 Shapton Pro and Glass Stones. I was still still able to cut paper pretty easily on a 120 grit stone. That's because even though I was on a coarse stone or an extra coarse stone, the burr I produced was standing on its edge. Okay, so basically that is what a burr is. In terms of why it's important is because if you take off enough material on one side of the cutting edge, say the right side of the knife, you will produce a, a situation where it's pushing or exposing new material. That's letting you know that you've, ex you've exposed enough material to turn to the other side of the knife. Okay. And again, there are a lot of folks out there that will say you never need a burr, that's fine. This is not, again, this is not an argument for or against any, anyone else's stance on this issue. Um, so that is how you detect a burr, and that's how you know what a burr is. And in terms of how to get rid of a burr, so there's really two ways to get rid of a burr. And I will explain both ways, and I'll explain both method, uh, methods and the pros and cons of each method. So the first way is we develop a burr on a on a knife, okay, on the right side of the knife, and then you typically will go to the left side of the knife and you would sharpen until you also will develop another burr coming the opposite direction. And then a lot of folks will tell you that from here on out you can go and draw your knife on a piece of wood, whether across the grain or with the grain. Okay, either way is fine. Uh, for a long time when I first started sharpening, I would simply draw my knife with the grain of the wood. What I was finding was, uh, and this is just uh, this is just from me sharpening and, and kind of doing my own experiments, was I was finding that my knives weren't quite as sharp when I would deburr with a piece of wood as opposed to stropping on the stone and letting the burr come off on its own. Now, if you go back to watch any of my videos uploaded on this channel here, you will hear me say the term micro burr. Okay, that's a very specific term that I coined that I developed saying that, listen, when you develop a burr, make sure that that burr is not really obvious and is not really intrusive uh, on the cutting edge. A lot of folks, if you, you know, I, I get messages from people that they say like, yeah, my burr is so big, if I run my fingers along my cutting edge, the burr will actually cut me. You don't want to get a burr that large. Basically, what my, my goal is when I'm sharpening is I just want to feel just enough difference on the edge to know that I developed that burr. I don't really want a really big, obvious burr. I don't want a burr that is sticking up this way from the cutting edge that is literally trying to cut my fingers off. I want my burr just to fold over and just to expose itself. Just That's why I call it a micro burr. So when you develop a micro burr on both sides, for me, that is good enough for you to remove on the stone. So again, folks will draw their knives either on a piece of wood, which I find is fine, you will remove a lot of that burr, but now you've actually also folded a, a good number of that burr back into the cutting edge, and then you will have to strop to remove it. And a lot of folks don't spend enough time stropping or don't use the right techniques to, during the stropping methods to actually get that burr stand back up. So for me, this is what I do. When I develop a, okay, let me just, let me just create a burr here. All right, okay, so we got burr, a burr on one side. So what I do personally, again, this is my personal ex experience. What I do now is I go into my stropping method. Okay, so in my strop, what I do is typically I'll count roughly about 10 to 12 strokes. That's usually, usually when, it, mm, yeah, 12 strokes. So I'll strop, I'll strop on one side. Okay, I will strop against the burr, so if I finish if I finish my sharpening on the right side of the knife, I will first drop on the left side. So I'm pushing, because now if I'm sharpening this way, the burr is standing this way, okay? So then now that I want that burr to stand up, I strop this way, I strop against the burr, right? So it's, you're forcing that burr to go from the left side of the knife to the right side of the knife. But the key is, as I'm stropping, I actually count down from 12 strokes to 10 strokes, 
So let me just walk you guys through the stropping method that I do. Well, really, it's a deburring method, okay? Uh, it wouldn't be right to call uh, stropping on a 1,000 grit stone stropping because technically stropping is on a leather or a higher grit stone. But let's just, for this, for the sake of this conversation, we'll, we'll call it the deburring process. So I have my stone, I have my burr that's developed because from sharpening the knife on the right-hand side. So now the burr is standing up and pointing this way. So now the point, the burr is actually facing down when I'm turning the knife on its left. So I go 12 times. And the number could be any number you want. I just choose 12 because I have found that 12 is a pretty good number for most of my knives and stones. We'll go 12 times. So now, at a micro level, what now that burr is now instead of pointing down on the left side, it's actually pointing up. Now, when I come to the other side, I reduce the stroke count every time I turn the knife over by two. So this way, uh, I'll go. I'll still do twelve, and then the next time I turn the knife around, it'll be ten. Okay, so we'll go twelve times. All right, so now we've done 12 strops on each side. Now, or each side. So now we'll go 10. We'll go 10 times. Okay, so now on the right side, we're gonna go 10 times as well. So now on the left side, we reduce that number down to eight. Okay, so now we go eight times on the right side. So now we go to six times on the left side. So we go six times on the right side. Okay, so in case you're lost, what I'm doing now is as I'm reducing that stroke count, what I'm doing is I'm forcing that burr to stand straighter and straighter on its end. So by the time I get to one or two strokes per side, that burr is still there. It's still on the cutting edge, but it's standing straight on the apex of the blade. And that's what makes a knife sharp. So I've done six, so we'll go down to four. Okay, so now we go down to two. And we'll do two a few times. All right, so one thing right here, I just want to point out, your stone can be a really good indicator as to how the burr is developing or being reduced. When you're watching, when you're stropping, look at your stone. Are you seeing very harsh lines on your stone? All right, if you still see a harsh line, it still means that the burr is still there and it's coming off slowly. Okay. If you're seeing these hazy lines, right here, that's not a big deal. That's basically just excess material that's still coming off. What you're looking for are really sharp lines. And if you do this right, and you watch your stone very carefully, you will see micro pieces. Uh, looks, they look like mini uh, small pieces of lead, okay? Just think of a lead pencil, but just think of like those lead being like the width of your hair. Oh yeah, there we go. Think of like little, imagine yourself cutting really, really short pieces of your hair on the stone. You'll see these little pieces of metal flakes. 
and oftentimes you'll see them in string in a very very short string sometimes it could be you know quarter a millimeter long or so basically that is the burr on the, on the knife coming off onto the stone and that's what you want to see okay that's telling you that your stropping is pulling off all of the excess material Okay, so now I'm only seeing these gray, these kind of hazy gray lines on my stone. I'm not seeing any sharp edges. Okay, let's go one more, a few more straps here. That was my fault. Yeah, see, there's no really obvious. And also, this is a 1,000 grit stone. It's still going to take off materials no matter how clean the edges, a 1,000 core stone will always pull off some material. So I've got a 6,000 grit, uh, grit stone here that I'll show you guys what to what to notice or look out for. So this stone has not been cleaned or flattened yet. Still, it's a brand new stone. All right, so this is what we'll do. So now, when I uh, by the time I move onto the stone, most of my burr it might still be actually long burrs at this point, but it should be standing on its end. The key to a 6,000 or a, a polishing stone is you will shorten that burr. So instead of having a burr that is, let's say, uh, a half a millimeter long, well, <laughs> I don't even know how to measure uh, burrs, but let's just say it's five microns in length. And by stropping on this sort of stone, you take that five microns and make it a two micron or one micron in length so it's still there you know and if you were to develop burr on this knife on the side instead of the, the burr being this long all right or, or this long or this long it's this long or that long does that make it you know, hopefully that makes any that's some sense for you guys uh, i don't have any drawings or any sort of animation skills so i can't show you guys how it looks um more precisely but that's essentially what we're what we're trying to achieve is we're taking that burr as we're 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 shortening the length of the burr by going on a coarse, I mean, on a finer grit stone. Okay, so in the first few strokes, you're gonna see this stone here pull off more material. But as we go, what we'll see is the stone will begin to pull less and less material off of the knife. Okay, so just look out for the stone, or look out at the stone. Okay, and you can take your time doing this. You can do it, you can do it any way you want to. You can actually go, you can go uh, in any direction, you guys. You can, you can go an edge leading stroke. That works for some people. This here is got a relatively straight edge, so I would avoid going to uh, a edge leading stroke. I would just go edge trailing stroke. Okay. So now what we're seeing here is we're not seeing any really obvious lines. Let me, let me uh, clean the stone a couple times and show you guys. So this is a rusty racer that I use to clean my stones with. This is the best load up remover in the history of my channel. <laughs> it's the best thing. I will, uh, I'll have a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. It's so cool. The stone is perfectly clean now. Oh, that's my, that's my ring. My ring's always turned, so it ends up scratching my stones when I, it's not a big deal though. Okay. So now, again, we're going very, very lightly, and there's, again, being a, this is a really hard stone, it's always going to pick up some material, and you'll find that the harder the stone, the more material that they reveal on the cutting edge. If you go to a softer stone, like let's say a, a King One, oh, not even King 1000, maybe a Torsera, Torseras are hard, but they will allow the knives to pull off materials and abrasives with every pass, they tend to load up a little bit less than the Shafton Glass Stones. Oh, even the Shafton Pros will not have the same load up issue as the Shafton Glass. Okay, 
So this, you know, again, this stone here, it will never be perfect. Um, every stone will pull off some material. You will never get a stone that will not reveal, uh, will not show any lines. That's just what they do. Uh, these stones are designed to pull off materials from your knife. So there's always going to be materials coming off. Okay. But what you're looking for are those really obvious lines. And I'm not seeing any obvious lines. I'm seeing more of a hazy uh, pattern in there. Okay. That's just, that's just, you're going to see that. Okay, so I'm going very slow, very, very gentle on the stone. Okay, so by this point, my knife has no more materials, at least meaningfully, to let the stone take off. At this point, you're done. Uh, some folks now will go onto a leather strop and pull some more material off. That's perfectly fine. I stop there. Uh, if I do want to strop some more, I will throw in some newspapers. I, uh, I, I found that newspaper does a really good job of the, uh, not deburring your knife, but just pulling off excess material off of the cutting edge. So I'm going to stop right here and find my towel. Okay, so let me show you the edge of this knife. So very, very sharp. And that's just, uh, that's just a few minutes on the stone. You can see. Okay, and you don't need a 6,000 grit stone to really get that that sharp of a knife. You can, a 1,000 grit stone will give you a really sharp knife if you have proper technique. And this is really bad paper, uh, really damp. It's been raining here a whole bunch, but. So you see, so right now, uh, and again, I don't have a microscope to show you guys, but there is technically still a burr, and the burr when I first went from 1,000 to 6,000 was this long, okay? And again, under a microscope, it was this long, but now it's probably this long, but standing up on its end. Um, so that's really a burr, that's how I deburr, and there's many methods. Uh, there are people who will say you can deburr on a piece of wood, you can use a piece of cork from a wine bottle, you can use a felt block pad, they those work as well you can even if you have a phone book you can draw you know, if this was a phone book you can draw the knife on the edge of the phone book and that works pretty well and that just makes a real loud noise though because the paper kind of squeaks but you can do it that way uh, again there are many ways to deburr and there are many discussions on what burr development is what it means uh, whether or not you should develop a burr um, these are just my opinions of what a burr is, how to remove it, what the benefits of them, uh, of, de of developing a small burr. And again, I develop a very micro burr for my knives and for my sharpening. I don't look for these really big obvious burrs. And again, it's really easy to figure it out. Uh, every knife is a little different. You'll find that Japanese knives uh, higher on the higher end of the Rockwell scale, so knives uh, 16 and above, will have a really well-defined small burr. Uh, you'll find that knives in the lower scale of the Rockwell hardness will develop these obvious large burrs and they tend to be softer and sometimes more difficult to get rid of. Uh, again, every knife is a little different. It also depends on what type of stone that you're using. So, you know, just practice, feel for the burr. Uh, the easiest thing is just to start on just the tip of the knife or half of the knife and use your fingertips or also use the palm of your hand. I find that my palm is pretty sensitive and that will help me feel for the differences in terms of the uh, height of, of, of a knife that doesn't have a burr versus the section of the knife that does have a burr. So it really just takes time and practice. Uh, hopefully that answers your question as to what burrs are, how to remove them, uh, why you should have them, why you, sh you know what they are and how to control them and manage them. Okay, so thank you for watching. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. I know that this is kind of a lengthy explanation as to what is a burr. This format of taking a question and making a video answer, I think it's gonna work for a lot of folks. It also makes me, uh, it also makes it much more interactive and I'm actually answering questions directly from what my subscribers are writing about. So if you guys have questions that you guys want me to answer on video, write me, leave me a comment on this video and all my other videos and I just read through every one of them. And when I see a question that I think I can make a video answer for, I will, okay? 
So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.